This video is sponsored by Finji. Check out the video game Tunic at tunicgame.com. Hey there, fellow makers. Welcome to the shop. You got Bill and Britt today, and we're making a sword and shield from Tunic. We're gonna do some good old school foam smithing. Yes. Yeah, we got a whole pile of foam right over there. Oh, geez. oh there it goes. We have a fire extinguisher too. <laughs> Thank goodness for that. All the foam. Look at this foam. Britt has already done the design work. She made some 2D blueprints of both the sword and the shield. And you can go download these for free on our website over at our free blueprint section. We'll link that down below. Yeah, in case you wanted to follow along. And we would love it if you followed along. It's one of my favorite things when I see folks making this stuff that we build. Especially like, this would make a great kids costume. And also I kind of want, I want this costume too. <laughs> it's just so cute. Love uh, it. So we have our materials, we have our design. Might as well just dive right in. I'm gonna start by working on the sword here and we have uh, some additional materials for the sword. The handle is this uh, roughly inch and a quarter outer diameter piece of PVC pipe that we already had. How handy is that? So that'll be the handle. And then to support the length of the blade, we have these fiberglass rods. These are actually tent poles that I found on the side of the road or on the streets of New York. <laughs> As Jimmy Dresto would say. That's right. Um, they're a little beat up, but I think they're gonna be perfect. We'll lop that end off and attach this somehow. That way our foam blade has a little bit of support and we'll sandwich a bunch of foam on top of it. So I think we can start by kind of building the skeleton out of these parts here. I cut everything to length. The handle is now the appropriate length and if I put these together, that'll be the full internal sort of skeleton for our sword. Uh, but now what I want to do is wrap some tape around this so that it fits nice and snug in there. Not quite. Got two rolls of duct tape here to take up all that space and it fits perfectly. We'll just, uh, I think, hot glue that in place and then got our skeleton. Okay, we just add some hot glue to the inside of this thing and then won't need much quickly. Go, go, go. Ah. It's cooling. Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> <laughs> this is not going according to plan. Ugh. Like hardly any glue got on this. <laughs> so instead of hot glue, we're gonna use some epoxy. This stuff cures really fast, but not instantly the way that the hot glue did. Okay. Get some glue on the inside of this thing. Oh, it's right. so much easier. I know, right? <laughs> All this time. I'm gonna put a little more glue at the top there. All right, cool. Well, now we can just let that cure. Go out for lunch. Ooh, lunch. Mmm, chili cheese Fritos. <sighs> Glue's cured. Oh, we can get all this stuff too. Nice. Ew. So that's where that goes. Uh, next step will be the uh, cross guard here and we're going to make this out of EVA foam. I got a chunk of 10 millimeter. I'm going to cut out a couple of bigger rough pieces that we can sort of sandwich together to make a big blank piece. So we'll do that. I think we want, I think we want three layers deep. That way it's thick enough. We'll have um, more foam on top. We'll do another five millimeter on either side. I want to make sure it's just about thick enough for that, and I think we're good. So next, we'll glue these together. We're gonna make ourselves a little foam sandwich here. This piece has glue on both sides because it has to stick to the piece below it. And then the piece above it needs to stick to it. There we go. Then we just mash it together really hard. That gives us a nice thick chunk of foam to work from. Uh, the piece we're going to cut out will be this right here. So I'm going to remove it from the pattern. Save that for later. There we go. Top and bottom doesn't seem to matter. Looks symmetrical. I hope so. I don't know. You drew it. <laughs> don't trust my drawings. <laughs> there we go. Now we can trace this out on our block of foam. These weights are actually offcuts from when I made Hellboy's 
Samaritan bullet. They use them as pattern weights now. Never throw anything away. I like your little uh, bow tie tie flatter. <laughs> You're beautiful. <laughs> That went great. Uh, I gotta tell you, if you wanna do a lot of work with foam, a bandsaw should be your first power tool purchase, especially trying to cut through things that are thick like this. It makes nice perpendicular cuts. Uh, next up, I'm removing some detail parts from our pattern here so we can cut out the next layer of foam. We'll use some five millimeter thick foam for that. This is a uh, Different color foam, because we have some of all the foam. This is probably five millimeter foam from Yaya. But we have some SKS foam, we have some TNT foam, we have the whole, the whole gamut, uh, which is why we have so many different colors. Uh, we'll need two of those. Now my bow tie has become cat whiskers. Wow. Meow. <laughs> uh, now there's two. Whoa. These pieces, these thinner pieces, I'm just gonna cut out with a knife. Just making sure the blade is nice and perpendicular to the cutting surface. In fact, these smaller parts here, I can use this smaller blade to make this cut right here. So in all the corners are nice and clean. Yeah. That's what we want. There we go. Something like that. Got glue on that part and glue on the back here. Now I'm gonna take my time, make sure everything lines up really well, especially these, these whiskers on the end here. There we go. Get it all clamped together. Fabulous. Gonna remove our whiskers here. We'll cut this ring out next. That's our next layer. I'm gonna cut this inner circle a little small and then I'll use the rotary tool to get it to the final shape there. I don't trust my knife skills to be able to cut that perfect circle. I'll do kind of the same thing with this. I'll just trim it and then use a sanding tool to get it down to the line. I use the rotary tool to add a round over on the top edges here compared to the original right there. I'll do this one in a second. Uh, I did that because I'm gonna do that with a lot of these edges uh, and it's easier to do it, at least for this one, it was easier to do before I glued it down. Uh, but I will have to come in here and round over all these edges as well. But now I can glue this down. There we go. Looking pretty good there. Got all the edges rounded over, looking nice and smooth. Uh, next, I wanna start drilling the holes for our handle. I'm gonna spot marked out. I have a Forsner bit that's big enough to accommodate the handle. So we're gonna drill this about halfway through. Cool. 
Cool. Nice. That'll go in there. And we'll make a, another hole all the way through for this guy. To punch this hole, instead of drilling it, I'm gonna use this brass pipe. I've sharpened the end of it with my rotary tool. If I went from the other side, it might, it might not exit at this exact spot. Ta-da! I think I centered it pretty well. Now this should go in here. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yes! Ha! Ha-ha! 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 <laughs> okay, time to attach this permanently. We're gonna use hot glue. It'll work this time, I'm sure of it. We'll just put a little hot glue in here and then close it up. And oh, there we go. That is like that forever. I've got a piece of 10 millimeter thick stuff here. I'm gonna cut a couple of strips that are the width of this pommel part and it'll eventually get wrapped around it. I think this piece actually needs to be 15 millimeters thick. So I have a 10 and a five here. It'll get wrapped around like, like that. Okay, that is now thick enough to be our thing. This will go around like so. I wanna put the bevels on here first though. I've tilted my bandsaw here to an angle to cut the bevel and I've made a little custom fence to hold the part and that should help me cut that bevel perfectly. I'll do it. Okay, let's figure out how long this ought to be. Let's say there, cut it a little long and then sneak up on it. Yeah, we can lose a little bit. I think we can make that work. I'm gonna glue that down. I just wanna make sure this PVC has uh, plenty of tooth on it. I'm gonna go with super glue for this just cause Contact cement does work on PVC, but not quite as well as super glue. And I can work in small sections here. I will actually put some contact cement on the end. Actually, let me do that right now. When the, uh, the two ends meet up here, they'll stick together and close up the seam. Dribble some accelerant on there so that it sticks immediately. And then we wrap it up. I think it's one of my favorite things about foam is how you can just bend it and wrap it to your needs. Boop. Up next is the very end of the pommel here and I'm gonna cut it out of this big old chunk of foam. Uh, if you don't have something this thick, you can just glue a few layers of foam together. Uh, I'm gonna start by cutting a cylinder and I'll uh, draw the circle there with my compass. Go cut that out on the bandsaw. Grabbed a screw. I'm gonna attach that and it'll be a way I can hold on to this while I work on it. Uh, but also it'll be a way we can attach it to the handle later. Put a little glue on that. Now I'll take the head of that right off and then I can put it in the jaws of my drill here and we have ourselves a tiny lathe. Got my favorite mini bolt cutters here and we'll just... Now that can go in there. We can start shaping that. I think I'll start on the belt sander to remove most of it but we're gonna tr spin it and sand it and try and match this. There it is, it turned out pretty good, I like it. Uh, next I'll drill out the center of that there and we should be able to glue this in. Uh, 
Oh, that's handy. Look at that. <laughs> I'll, I will glue it. Did you dribble some uh, activator in there, Britt? There we go. All right. Thank you. You dribble some on the other side there. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. That yeah. wasn't a frame at all. <laughs> Good job, team. <laughs> Time for the blade. Uh, we're going to make this out of three layers of 10 millimeter thick foam here. So I'm going to cut three of these out of this piece of foam. To the bandsaw. To the bandsaw. Sword blade piece is ready to go. Next, I'm going to figure out where this is going to go. I'll make the, a trench in this sandwich. That this will be the middle. That little bit there, I'll need a smaller knife blade. Saw our way through, I'll even push it through like that. There we go. And now this can fit right around that. Uh, now we can put our whole sandwich together like that and then it'll slide on like, like that. Everything's been glued up with some contact cement, let it dry for a little bit, and now I can very carefully stick these together, actually, to give myself a little insurance. I can put a piece of paper down so it doesn't stick immediately, and I can get everything lined up. There we go. Now the paper can come out. Lovely. And then I'll do the same thing for this piece. Very good. And squish all that together. Excellent. What a lovely sandwich. Delicious. The idea is that goes on there. To make the chonky looking sword blade. That's wonderful. <laughs> um, next, we'll do all the bevels on here. Remove a lot of foam. I planned out where the bevels are gonna go. Uh, the first one being a taper at the very tip from here forward. That's gonna taper down. And then there will be uh, a bevel there and a bevel there and then this guy right there. I'm gonna keep the edge really thick like this entire piece of foam here. Um, because if I make it too thin, when I uh, cut this bevel here, it'll start showing that rod right there. So it's going to be really thick and kind of chunky. Uh, and I will do a lot of this work on the belt sander, but I'm going to try and remove as much foam with a knife before that as possible. So the first thing I'll do is try and cut these tapers here, making sure that my knife is very sharp for this. keeping this very proud. I'm removing some material, but I'm leaving plenty behind to finesse with the uh, sander. I don't want to overdo it here. But I also don't want to turn all of this into dust. There we go. Not quite up to that line. We'll do that on the belt sander. Now I'm going to do the side bevels. I'm sure there's actual sword maker terms for all these things. And I am cutting towards myself and being very mindful. This just seems like the best way to do this cut. In fact, I can put my hand beyond uh, so I don't, not in the path. And again, I'm leaving lots of material. There we go. Saving myself all this dust. I have my belt sander ready to go. I have a dust mask. I also have a dust collector going because we're going to make a lot of dust. Uh, now it's just carefully and slowly sneaking my way towards the lines I've got here. I just don't want to remove too much material. There's no way to fix that.
Just got a sanding stick here to do the last bit of finessing. We'll go in and put a, a sharper edge on here with the rotary tool in a little bit. But I am I am really pleased with how this turned out. It looks beautiful. Felt like Peter Lyons there at the sander there, putting a bevel on a, <laughs> on my smith. sword. Yeah. It's just a lot faster than metal. A lot. <laughs> a lot, a lot. Well, it's just because I haven't hardened this yet. <laughs> <laughs> Going in with some sanding sticks to really just tidy up all these bevels that I did. Got a 200 grit and I have a 400 grit I'll hit it with as well. Just trying to get this as smooth as possible. This has to be a flat cartoony looking color, so not a lot of room to hide any crimes. While I'm working on those bevels, why don't I tell you a little bit about today's sponsor, of course, the game Tunic. It's a brand new indie adventure game full of challenges, mysteries, and secrets. You play as an adorable sword-swinging fox who explores a vast and wild land full of lost legends, ancient powers, and ferocious monsters. The combat is fun and genuinely challenging, especially the incredibly unique bosses. I'm stuck on the librarian right now. Exploring in Tunic is deeply rewarding as you find your way through an intricately connected world of forests, ruins, and catacombs. I especially love the colorful, nostalgia-laden game manual that you piece together one page at a time. Each page is covered with full-color illustrations and offers clues that guide you on your quest. There are also several spectacular maps. I'm a total sucker for puzzles in this game has tons of them woven into the beautiful environment of the tunic world. Everything about that world is wonderfully crafted, especially the extraordinary sound design by Power Up Audio and the delightful soundtrack by Lifeformed. I personally sunk a good 10 hours into tunic this last weekend and I am absolutely hooked. I can't wait to discover what else there is for me to find. You can play it day one on Xbox Game Pass, Xbox Series X slash S, Xbox One, PC, and Mac storefronts. Head on over to tunicgame.com to learn more. Thanks so much, Tunic. This has been a lot of fun. The blade is looking great. I really love how this has turned out so far. And now it's time to attach it to the handle. I brushed a little bit of contact cement on here and on there, and they'll meet when it closes. But I wanna put some epoxy on here to give it a little extra grab, so we'll mix that up now. <laughs> None of that went in. Oh, what a mess. There we go, that's what we want. Put the glue on here, a little glue on everything. In we go. Bit of squeeze out in there, I wanna remove that. Possibly a little too much epoxy, that's fine. The uh, contact cement should hold it all nice and closed. Just gotta make sure my sword's, you know, nice and balanced. Yeah. Looks so good. <laughs> ha! The sword is really coming together. I love how it looks. I uh, just gotta let that dry. And before we get to sealing and painting, we should probably build that shield. You wanna do that one, Britt? Yeah, I could do that. All right, here, hand me the camera. Here's the pattern for the shield. And this is just half of it. I'm going to cut this out, trace it onto some thick foam, and then flip it over to get the other half. Got a big piece of foam right here for you. <laughs> oh, oh, geez. Is this, is this good? Yeah, I think this will be enough. <laughs> <laughs> I use this as a blanket. <laughs> Pieces have been cut out and you will notice that the center seam is curved. And I'm hoping that when I glue these together, it will give the shield the curved shape. 
that is in the reference. Before I glue them though, I think I wanna give them a little bit of help by curving them. I'm gonna use a heat gun. Whoa! <laughs> Now we stick. That's working. Yes. That's working. Righteous. 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 That's a nice looking dome shape you got there. Thank you. Just have to press the seam in now that I tacked it down. I know some people like to kind of invert their pattern to really smush it. Boop. Hey! I like it. Yeah, me too. Uh, next step is doing all the trim around the outside. This border is about an inch thick and it's supposed to have this really big taper on it. So I'm going to do that taper in thicker foam. This is about an inch thick. And we'll just cut out some long strips. Now that I have my square, I'm gonna turn these into triangles by cutting down the middle. <laughs> these look super clean. Love how they turned out. And before I glue these down, I'm going to kind of trim the angles that. Now I will kind of just loosely mark where the glue is going to go. Yeah. Oh, it's going to look so good. We've got both sides ready to go. And angle here, they line up pretty well. We put glue on the sides and glue on the bottom. And glue here, but not all the way up here. I'm going to attach these oversized and then cut them because I doubt I'm going to get this to match up on the corner. Right now I'm just trying to line up this little outside part. Yeah. And now I can kind of go back in. Press that down. Man, that looks good. Yeah, it does. It's love the extra dimension you get out of it. This looks really cool. So I have glue on these two sides, glue there. I'm just gonna try and touch the bottom. I'm going to attach the outside and then I can try and smush this together. Yes. Oh, thank you. There you go. There we go. Look, it's flawless. Mm hmm. Oh, look at that. Ooh. Like that, kind of. Yeah. I stuck these two pieces together and now we're ready to permanently assemble. Okay, my goal here is just to make sure this gets stretched enough to make the corner. Now I can mash the rest down. That's looking pretty cool. Nice. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> the edges are all nice and smooth now. And the last thing we need to add to the shield is a handle. In the reference, there's just a little a little handle on the back there, so Bill sketched one up. Uh, does it go like this or like this? Like that? Like that. Like that. Yeah. Uh, so we have another big chunk of foam. This one's even thicker. It's like an inch and a half.
feels good, looks good. Time to stick it down. Hurt, hurt, ta-da! Yay! <laughs> and just like that, I have a shield. Pew, 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 pew. Ha! ha. <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> Stab, block, stab. This is really cool. That looks really fun. Hey, it's me again. <laughs> I'm just mixing a little Mod Podge cocktail here. Uh, we're gonna seal everything with Mod Podge and Plasti Dip. Trying to get a, as smooth a surface as possible. Um, we're gonna do the Mod Podge first. And I've got some nice sponge brushes here. I don't want any um, brush strokes left and hopefully that'll, that'll help. So we're gonna cover everything. I should be able to hold it by the uh, handle, which actually won't get any Mod Podge on it. Yeah, I think we're gonna do like some kind of wrap. Yeah, we'll put a wrap around this and then we'll do the same thing for the shield. Um, we'll put a screw or something in the shield so we can hang it up to dry. Uh, and then we'll wrap something around that screw hole once the painting is done. Oh, also there's supposed to be a gem here uh, and we will get to that. <laughs> Britt, did you want to do a little Mod Podge oh, with me? Oh, I, I guess I could. A little podging? <laughs> We've got three good layers of Mod Podge brushed on our props. We're letting them dry right now, but it's time to start working on the gems that go in there. And I've measured the diameter of this circle. It's about 35 millimeters, a little smaller. I'm going to vacuum form the gem, so I need a little room. Uh, so I have that figured out on my compass, and I'm going to cut out the pattern for that. Got two pieces of quarter inch MDF glued together to make a good half inch here. Uh, and that is my the start of my gem anyway. I'm going to make a couple of them in case I screw it up, but also I should be able to vacuum form two of these at the same time and save material. I'm also going to add some lines that should be helpful just right through the middle here. This one. And then perpendicular. This isn't critical, so just eyeballing it. We're gonna eventually sand facets into this and these lines should help us a bit. All right, let's go cut it out. Got some 200 grit right here, smoothing everything out. My gems are ready and I've got our whole miniature uh, vacuum forming rig set up. This is literally an $8 toaster from Goodwill and some scrap parts and a little shop vacuum. Uh, I have some PETG loaded up here, a really thin sheet of it. And that's what's gonna get warmed up and then drawn over our uh, vacuum forming bucks. I'm gonna put a little baby powder on here. This will help, should help the uh, plastic not stick to our parts here. Want to be able to get them out of there. Very good. All right, let's uh, heat up some plastic. Ready to go. I left a protective film on here. Uh, we'll peel that off later. Let me just do a little heating up. 10 seconds. Just letting up. Oh, it started to, started to blister. Let's go. Oh. And on. I think we're good. It started to bubble on the edge here. That's why I went for it. There's some bubbles up here too, but I don't think they got to our gems, which should, should pop right out. There we go. One. We could do more of those if we want, but we should be all set with these. We'll just take them out of there and see how they look. Pretty cool. Trimming away all the extra, including the sort of rounded flange at the bottom there. All right, I've done all my cleanup work. I can peel off the protective film now. Nice shiny surface in there. Yeah, there's our nice Ooh. shiny gem. Does it fit? I sure hope so. <laughs> Let's find out. Oh, look at that. 
good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we gotta paint you. Get out of there. <laughs> the gem is this lovely shade of red, and we've got this wonderful metallic red paint here. We're actually gonna paint the insides of these. Uh, and we're just gonna dump a bunch of paint in there and kind of just coat the inside. That's the plan anyway. Boop. Since we're doing it this way, this is what you get to see, this really glossy outside. There won't be any brush strokes. It'll look really solid. This stuff's really thick. It's just taking a while to get around. Let's just put a little more paint in there. There we go. Uh, there's a lot of paint in there, but I'm just gonna flip these over. And it's all right if it leaks out. Uh, the back of it isn't important. Uh, we're gonna let those dry. It's a lot of paint, so we'll probably let that dry overnight. It is very nearly time to start uh, painting, sealing and painting this thing. Uh, but before I do that, I have some 320 grit, uh, and I am doing my best to just knock down some of the brush strokes. I don't want to sand this too much. If I chew through that uh, Mod Podge layer, it's gonna be a pain to, to repair that. So I'm just doing a light pass of sanding on everything to remove a little bit of the texture. Uh, but once that's all done, we're gonna hit this with a sealer. We have uh, some of these spray rubbers, uh, like Plasti Dip. I'm gonna go with this peel coat. It's pretty much the same thing, only this is silver. So some of the silver parts will be base coated in this color. We won't have to paint them. How handy is that? All right, let's spray on some sealer. Yeah, we uh, sprayed this down with that peel coat yesterday and let it dry overnight. It looks really great. A couple cat hairs. <laughs> it's possible that I drop this off camera, uh, but I really love how it looks. Uh, and what's better is this seals the whole thing, but also the blade is gonna stay this color. We don't have to paint that. Uh, and then the edge of the shield and of course the back are gonna stay that color as well. The painting, which is next, is gonna be uh, pretty simple. For the shield, we have a blue shield with a red sort of cross looking thing on it. I think that's where we're gonna start. First, I gotta mask off the edges that I don't wanna paint. I actually enjoy the tedium of masking. I think it's very meditative. You know what, to go around this curve, we're gonna start breaking this up into smaller pieces. The thing I love about masking is that you have all the time in the world to make it right now. And then when you execute, when you throw the paint on there, it's almost effortless. And you can be confident that it's gonna be right because you spent the extra time during the masking to get it to look good. Versus if you're hand paint painting something while you're drawing the brush across it, that's when you gotta nail it. And off in my hand, it does something weird. <laughs> If I do that now, if I accidentally, oh, I taped that in the wrong spot, I can just move it. Yeah. Going with some Createx paints here, we have a blue and a red. They're like the perfect colors. I'm gonna airbrush it and uh, got this siphon fed airbrush here ready to go. Just spray on one or two good layers. I'm gonna let that shield dry. We do have to add some more paint to it, but it has to be dry first. And now it's time to do gold on the sword. Everything south of the blade is gonna be gold, so I wanna mask off just the blade. I've got the edge all masked off the way I want, but I want to cover the rest of the blade. I have this funky tool, it's really awesome. It adds a piece of tape to a piece of paper. You could obviously make that yourself. But how handy is that? <laughs> now I can just wrap this around the rest of the blade and the paper will cover it. There we go. We've got a gold paint, same Createx paint in the airbrush, so why don't we go paint it gold. All right, next step is masking off the blue for the red paint. And I'm just kind of eyeballing, I got the reference image right here, 
doing a little guesswork. I've made some measurements along the edge here that should help me. But yeah, this is not really a scientific process. I'm just trying to see what looks good. That looks pretty all right. Uh, this, this part has to go. And I'll cut that and lay it back down. Mm -hmm. There we go. And this corner will get blocked off and then it'll all be red. That looks pretty good. Got all the masking done here. Just double checking that everything's nice and flat to the surface. I like it. Looks pretty good, right? Now we're gonna add some red. All the paint has been sprayed. We're letting it dry. Uh, I can demask this fellow though. There we go. Uh, look at that. All we have left is to put the gems in and do a wrap on the handle, but we're gonna let this dry all the way. Looking good, looking good. The red paint is still a little wet, but that should be okay so long as I don't touch it. Ooh. Oh, yes. Nice. That's looking pretty good. Uh, but I put a ton of red paint on there. I'm gonna go ahead and let that dry overnight. It's the next day and our paint is dry and looking really lovely. Uh, if I was gonna bring this to a con, I might clear coat all this for protection, but I think I'm gonna call this good and there isn't even any weathering. It's just super, super clean. So we're gonna leave it that way. Uh, next though is the wraps. We've got the handle on the shield that needs a little bit of a wrap around it. Of course, the sword. And for that, I've got this big old bucket of leather scraps and digging through it. Found this piece, I believe I got in a off cut bin, that's quite the off cut, huh? We'll just cut some thin straps of that for our leather wrap. Ta -da. All right, we put our contact cement on, so now we can just wrap this thing around and then it'll stick. It's really, really simple, although I don't want this to stick to itself. There we go. This is gonna wrap back on itself. I'm gonna trim it and then just super glue it to itself on the back there. A little super glue on that. A little super glue on me. <laughs> just stick it down. And then the seam is on the back and we won't see it. Looking good. All right, let's do the same thing to the sword handle. And round and round it goes. These poor scissors. <laughs> they are, I, these are like, these are the scissors I bought, first bought when I got into doing all this and they've been through some stuff. Let's get the, oh, that's much easier. Look at that. Look at that. Sneak. Right in there. <laughs> All right. Oh, feels good. I think we're ready for the last step, Britt. I'm very Aww, excited. Yay. The gems are good to go. Um, Britt actually brushed much of the excess paint out of there. There was way too much paint, uh, but we let it dry and now we're gonna install it. I'm looking at the picture and it should be in that direction. So a little hot glue and should be all we need. There we go. Oh, that looks cool. <laughs> Snug it in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yay. Wait, where's my shield? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, this is wonderful. It looks so cartoony and silly and delightful and I absolutely love them. Your shield, my love. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah! Ah! Yeah! <laughs> yeah, this was so much fun. What a delightful build. Uh, thank you so much again to Finji for sponsoring this video. 
Tunic is awesome. We've been playing it a bunch over the last few days. It's been a lot of fun and the puzzles are great. Yes. Oh, if you love puzzles. Or secrets. Secrets. Yeah. Go check it out. Highly recommended. Of course, if you want to build these props, the blueprints that we made to put these together will be uh, available for free over on our website, along with a bunch of other ones. If you are into this kind of crafting, PunishProps.com is the place to go. Uh, in fact, that's where you can go get our Foam Smith books. Yeah, if you want to get into making stuff out of foam, and you should because it is super durable, crazy light, like this weighs nothing. Mm -hmm. Definitely check out our Foam Smith books. Yes, especially Foam Smith 2, which is all about making props. That'll wrap it up. Thank you guys so much for watching, and an extra special thanks goes out to our, the members of our Extra Credit Club. Uh, they support us every single week, and if you want to get a blog every week and behind the scenes access to everything that we do, you can head on over to the link down below and join either on Patreon or right here on YouTube. So thank you guys so much for making all of this possible. That'll do it. We're all done. It's time to go out, out into the world with our new weapons and uh, explore and discover and uh, destroy monsters. <laughs> Thanks for watching. See you next build. Okay, go! Already messed up. <laughs> it looks like you have a wand. Ha! Ah. Ha! Ah. I'm out of Kadabra! Ah. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> what? There's ducks back here. There's a cat hair. <laughs> <laughs> Always. <laughs> Meow, <laughs> meow, <laughs> meow. <laughs> Smaller blade, man, that's dirty. I'm gonna get a brand new blade. I'm gonna treat myself. If you look carefully, you can see a whole bunch of cat fur in our fan. <laughs> <laughs> Blue field with a red. If you want me to start guarding your home, you can say- Computer, stop! Stop! Guard my home? Wow. Don't eat it. That blood or paint? <laughs> Probably paint. Nope. It's blood. <laughs> Just a little bit. What'd you do? I have a fresh knife, new blade, treated myself. You deserve it. That's right. We also have like 15,000 spare blades. <laughs> you can buy them at punishprops.com slash shop. There we go. Feels good. All right. Dance to the music. Come on, dance to the music. Dance, dance, dance.